Hey, what's up? My name is Andrew and this is my C++ tutorial about the parameter packs in C++ since C++11. So pretty much they are just a kind of like packed values in an array or whatever, and they can be at different types. For example, you can have integers with chars, with strings or whatever types you want. And in this example, you can see that I have a calculate sum function that takes a first parameter and the rest as a pack. And therefore the two will be the first and three for five will be the pack. I mean, they will be just packed into this variable. And in a compile time, this if const expression is since C++17, it just checks whether or not I need to generate a new function calculate sum that takes the pack and will again take from the pack the first parameter from it and then again pass the rest if there is a rest. If there's not, it just returns the first parameter and it goes back and I have my sum. So in this case, you can see that I'm just using the recursion to get my sum from every single first parameter from the pack, reducing the size of pack by one element. And that's pretty much how I make it. Therefore, if I run it, you can see it's 14 and two plus three plus four plus five is exactly 14. So that's pretty cool. Also, I can do with them, for example, pre-incrementation where it will let me to 20 because as you can see, I have at start three items in my parameter pack. Therefore, three things are incremented by one. So I have plus three. Again, later I have two items and later I have one. So at the end of it, it's plus six and 14 plus six is 20. Therefore, that's my result. You can do lots of stuff with that, like casts, like some binary operation, like whatever you want. If you uh, like Google and search for what to do exactly certain things. Also, there are some shenanigans with calling, but it's not for this tutorial. So since C++17, you can write it kind of simpler, you can say, just like this. Without the first parameter, I just have the pack. And if I write it like this, it simply adds the pack to every, like it's make a sum, a sum of every single item in the pack. Therefore, if I run it right now, you can see it's 13 again. So that's pretty cool. And later, you can also do that with classes. Let's say that I want to make a game that has a typical classes like RPG, where I can be a warrior, mage, archer, and I can even mix it. And here I just have simple classes that print out their values of strength, intelligence, and dexterity. And also I will have a class called player here that will have a parameter pack of his parent classes. So pretty much I can add a different amount of parent classes for a certain object that I want to actually create. And therefore you can see that I'm just calling my parent classes and I'm printing my name. And right now I can just create my player. So let's say player and for the start that can be an archer. So player archer p1 and let's call him John and let's give him 10 dexterity. That's pretty much it. Now let's run it. And as you can see, I have an I archer with 10 dexterity and I'm John. And for example, if I want to add more, the next item that you add will be the first one created because it goes to the last item and then goes back. Therefore, if I right now add mage, and give him five intelligence, you can see that the mage is created first. I'm the mage with five intelligence, I'm an archer with 10 dexterity, I'm John in my implementation. And I can also add a warrior, let's say in the middle. I, can, I want to call the constructor of the warrior in the middle between them and I can just give him 100 strength. And yeah, let's do it like this. And now if I call it, you can see that I'm the mage, I'm warrior, I'm an archer, and I'm John. So that's pretty helpful if you want to create a different amount of parents or different amount of things for your stuff. So that will be from me. Yeah, that's it from me. Hope you learned something from that and I see you in the next one.